Hello, my name is Dean Suzuki, and I'm a senior solution architect with AWS. Today, I want to talk about how you can use Microsoft DFS namespaces with Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. This is the second video I put together. The first one was covering the basics of Amazon FFX, FSx for Windows File Server. But in case you missed that, Amazon FSx for Windows File Server is Amazon's managed Windows File Server service. So we provide native Windows File Server services to our customers in a managed environment, which means that we manage the hardware and the software for our customers. So you don't need to worry about patching, maintaining the servers. Uh, we take care of all that for you. In this video, we're gonna extend that with talking about how you can use DFS namespaces to extend the capability of Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. So here's a brief agenda of what we're gonna cover here in this session. First, I wanna talk about how D Microsoft DFS extends the capabilities of Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, and then walk through how to set it up. So in order to use Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, in order to get the file system access, users need to know the DNS name of the file system to map a file share to it. For example, in this example, we created three Amazon FSx for Windows file systems, and they're listed here. So in order to access these file systems, the user would need to know this name here in order to access the file, to map a file share to it. Now, each of these file systems can be in size from 32 gigabytes to 64 terabytes. And if you needed more space than that, you could actually combine multiple file systems together using DFS. The other thing I wanted to highlight here is that this data on the file system can be encrypted at rest and also in transit, and data is replicated across within an availability zone. And you can also set it up so that you can set up an F6 file system to be replicated across multiple availability zones. So I want to go through a quick demo now on how to use Amazon FSx for Windows File Server and how to access the file system using the DNS name. Now here I am in the AWS Management Console after I logged in. To get to Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, all you have to do is go to Find Services and I type in FSx. And this takes me to the Amazon FSx uh, console. So I'm going to go ahead and click this file system that we created. And this is what we did in the first video. Now, one of the things you'll notice down here is it has a DNS name. I'm going to go ahead and copy that to clipboard. So I have a copy of that. Go to Windows Explorer and paste it in here. I'm going to put the backward slash, backward slash here. And I click that. And now I, I have the access to the share and I can right click and I can map a network drive to that. Now you notice now I have the network drive mapped to that file share. But in order to do that, I would have had known the DS, DNS name to map that share. So I'm gonna go back to the slides now and show how DFS can extend this capability. So now using Microsoft DFS with Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, we can help organize information and make it easier for users to access the Amazon FSx for Windows File Shares. With DFS, you can create a DFS hierarchy or namespace and map the Amazon FSx for Windows File Server file systems into the hierarchy. So in this example, if you see here, we have those three Amazon FSx for Windows file systems, and we can map that into a hierarchy, for example, under example.com slash corp. So now <clears throat> your users just need to know that uh, to access the file share, all they have to do is go to example.com slash corp, and they'll see the file shares underneath it. They won't need to memorize or know the FSX, Amazon FSX for Windows File Server, file systems, DNS names to access. So now let's go through a demo of this. So here I am on the client. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Explore window here and type in my DFS namespace. In this case, it's corp.example.com slash corp. If I hit enter now, you'll see I have <clears throat> three shared folders here, marketing, projects, and sales. However, it looks to me as an end user that they're you know just all located under this namespace, but these are actually mapped to three different file systems on the back end. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the browser here, go to FSX. So how this maps is that this sales folder actually maps to this file system. This projects folder actually goes to the Dean test file system. And this marketing folder goes to this marketing uh, file system. <clears throat> so by using DFS, we've extracted the need to know the Amazon FSx for Windows File Server 
file system DNS name, for example, under here, instead of having to direct the users to memorize this DNS name for each of those files, uh, file systems, we can map the DFS namespace and just provide the users the name of the DFS namespace. And underneath there, we can abstract the underlying infrastructure. And all they need to know is that the to just go to here and they have the fold of hierarchy here of all the different file shares that we provide. So I'm going to go back to the slides and show you how this looks. So in the demo, we showed you how DFS can be integrated with Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. And how this looks is that with DFS, you typically set up namespace servers to host the namespace hierarchy. And you set up two of them for redundancy. In this case, in this diagram, we have one set up in each availability zone. One namespace server one in AZ availability zone A, and another one in AZ B. And then those host a namespace hierarchy, in this case, example.com slash corp. Uh, underneath that, you have the file shares. And each of those file shares can be accessed from instances in the availability zone, and they just access it, access it via the DFS namespace. Behind the scenes, those, uh, those shares are mapped to Amazon FSx for Windows File Server's file systems. And so you can see here, as I showed you in the, start, in the demo, they are mapped to three different file systems. What this allows you to do is really scale the size and the capacity of Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. Since each of those file systems, as we mentioned, can have up to 64 terabytes in size, and you can map up to 50,000 shares or get about three exabytes of, of storage capacity per DFS namespace. And then you can also set up multiple, this is just using one DFS namespace, you can set up multiple DFS namespaces. So you can actually scale the system as large as you need. The other thing we talked about in the first video is how each of these file systems can have up to two gigabytes per second throughput. And in front of those, uh, in front of the F Amazon FSx for Windows File Server file system, there's a caching layer, which allows you to even scale even higher about up to three gigabytes per second per file system. Now with DFS, we can even scale that even higher by sharding the data across different, uh, different, maybe different uh, indexes. For example, here, let's suppose we have this DFS namespace, example.com slash corp. And maybe this is a home folder namespace where you have home folders for your users. So maybe for the users whose name starts with A to F, those users go to this file system. The next set of users from G to M go to this file system. And the third set go to this file system. Each of these can have up to two gigabytes per second throughput, not including the caching. So you can see how using DFS namespaces, you can actually scale the scale, not just the, the, the capacity, but also the throughput by partitioning the namespace. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we set that up. So here I am on a Windows 2019 server. I'm gonna make this a DFS namespace server. To do that, go you go to the here, and you type in server manager to launch the server manager tool. And we're gonna go ahead and add a role and a feature. Hit next, next, next. And scroll down to you see file and storage services and open up file and iSCSI services. And under here, you're gonna select DFS namespace. I've already got it installed, but this is what you would select to install those services. So I'd go ahead and select that, hit next, 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 and install that capability. I'm gonna hit cancel here since I've already installed it. So once you have the DFS namespace server installed, uh, this this will the server can now host the DFS namespace hierarchy. When you do that, now if you go and launch the go to the the menu here and go to Windows Administrator Tools, you'll see a new tool called DFS Management here. So go ahead and launch that. So now what we're going to do first is create a namespace. Now you see the existing namespace that we had. I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to create do select here is new namespace. And it's going to ask for the server that you want to host the namespace on. So I'm going to get the server's name and I actually have it right here. So you paste that in. I'm going to hit next. And now it's going to ask for the namespace name. I'm going to make this one called public since the other one, I already have one called corp. And now you can here edit the settings. So I'm going to go ahead and hit by default administrators have full access and other users have read and write permissions. Hit OK, hit Next. And it's giving you an option of the type of namespace to create. If you have Active Directory, I recommend you use the domain-based namespace. So I'm gonna choose that, hit Next, hit Create. 
and it went ahead and created the namespace. So now we have two namespaces here. We have the corp one that we demonstrated earlier, and now we have this new one called public. Now let's go ahead and create a folder underneath that. And to, that, to do that, I'm gonna map it to an existing Amazon FSX for Windows file server file system. So I'm gonna go back to the, file, the, the browser here, go down to Amazon FSX, hit the file systems tab. I'm gonna go to the Dean test file system that we created earlier. Here, I'm gonna grab the DNS name so it allows you to copy it to clipboard. And we're gonna take a look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up an Explorer window. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here. And you see that we have two file shares, a project share and, and a project share and a, the share that's created by default. What I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna create a folder under here and map it into the DFS namespace. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit public, new folder. In this case, let's make it home folders for our users' home folders. So I'm gonna put home folders. I'm gonna hit, it's gonna now specify a target. I'm gonna hit add. And I'm gonna paste in the DNS name of the Amazon FSX for Windows file server file system that we specified earlier. Hit browse. And you see <clears throat> that we have those existing shares and there's also a default D share. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new shared folder. I'm gonna name the, the uh, shared share name home folders and that's going to ask for the path i'm going to hit browse i'm going to pick it off the d drive create a new folder it says here make new folder i'm going to call it home folders and i'm going to change the permissions here to administrators have full access other users have read write and hit okay so now i have a new share here i'm going to specify that hit okay hit okay and now we're going to create this new a folder under the DFS namespace. Hit OK. So there, there it is. So for now, if I go back to here and just hit refresh, you'll see the new share created. And now if we open another Explorer window, and let's go to that DFS namespace that we just created. So we'll go to backwards slash backwards slash corp dot example dot com slash public and you'll see the home folders folder that we created under that hierarchy. So this is how you create and integrate the DFS namespace with the Amazon FSX for Windows file server file system. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the slides and summarize. So in this video, in summary, you learned how to integrate Microsoft DFS namespaces with Amazon FSX for Windows file server, which enables you to really organize large amounts of data. As we demonstrated in the demo, underneath a DFS namespace, you can map multiple Amazon FSX for Windows file server file systems. And each of those file systems can host up to 64 terabytes of data. Thus, by just mass, uh, not ma mapping those file systems to the DFS namespace, you can scale the system as large as you want. In addition to that, we showed you how DFS can actually simplify the user access to shared folders. Instead of having to memorize the DNS names of each of the Amazon FSX for Windows file server file system names, users just need to go to the DFS namespace hierarchy. In our example is corp.example.com slash corp. And underneath that, they'll just see the folders, uh, the shared folders. And each of those folders can be mapped back to different file systems. So it really simplifies the user access to those shared folders. In addition to that, we demonstrated how you can actually scale the performance of the system with data sharding. In this example, we showed how, for example, for home folders, by partitioning the home folders by, for example, maybe the user's first name, if the user's first name started from A to F, for example, they could be hosted on one file system, and that the next set of users, let's say from G to M, could be hosted on another file system, and the users whose first name starts with N to Z can go to the third file system, and each of those file systems can have up to two gigabytes per second of throughput. Therefore, if you wanted, you can basically scale the performance of your system to as high as you need it just by sharding the data across the different file systems. So here are some additional references if you want to learn more about Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. The first link is to some getting uh, Windows guides, and the second link covers some of the features of Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. With that, I wanted to thank you for joining. Take care.